we want realness. We want we want authenticity. We want transparency. We want vulnerability. We want people to show up as themselves. But sometimes that's really hard to do, like to show up as you. How do I do that? How do I know it's safe enough? How do I know who I am? All, how do I even go on that journey? What up, y'all? Welcome back to Practice the Podcast, where we fuse research and culture to help you develop the mindset, habits, and skills that you need in order to live out your purpose with confidence. I'm your host, Dr. Reese. Now it's time to get better, y'all. Let's grow. We're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Practices are meant to be competitive. They're meant to be competitive. If your practices are more competitive than the games themselves, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Yo, I'm so pumped to be back in this thing with y'all because we're talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Literally, it is the root of you-ish. We're talking about authenticity. More importantly, we're talking about the authenticity equation. Yes, I created an equation, a formula to help you figure out like, how do I be my most authentic self? And the reason why I did this was because authenticity, the need and desire for it, I believe, and I think you would agree, is at an all-time high. Like, we want realness. We want, we want authenticity. We want transparency. We want vulnerability. We want people to show up as themselves. But sometimes that's really hard to do. Like, to show up as you, how do I do that? How do I know it's safe enough? How do I know who I am? All, how do I even go on that journey? And so when I created this equation, I had to go back and dissect myself. I had to go back and dissect my journey is how did I go from who I was to who I am in being inauthentic, cocky, uh, lacked humility, so many different things to being the person that I think that I am today, who I believe is authentic, who is vulnerable, who is transparent, who is confident, right? Who roots myself in humility to show up as me who is comfortable being me and because that's the same thing that i want for other people and so there are four four aspects that make up this equation that make up this formula and we're going to use this episode today to overview the importance of this equation overview how this connects to living out your purpose with confidence uh to cover the the a surface level of these four and then we're going to dive into each one individually just like we've done the last few episodes when it came to the purpose equation um, equation and the confidence equation so there's four aspects of this and here they are number one is humility oh humility (sighs) humility i'm just gonna leave that right there number two was self-awareness number three is audacity number four is trust so we're going to overview these humility self-awareness audacity and trust these are the four things i believe that everybody needs if they're going to be their most authentic self right alongside that what you need is patience <laughs> you're new vulnerability you're neg- you're going to need um an anchor right you're going to need to be committed which is where the patience comes into play so before we really dive into that y'all know i got to bring in a quote to help tie this in right and the quote for today is it's impossible to truly live out your purpose while being someone other than yourself. I'm gonna say it again. It's impossible to truly live out your purpose while being someone other than yourself. Now, the reason why I feel like this quote is the anchor in the sticking point for what we're talking about today when it comes to the authenticity equation is because it's so easy to get caught up wanting to be somebody else. It's so easy to feel like we are less than, that we're not good enough but it's going to be impossible for us to live out our purpose that was uniquely created and given to us. Now, here's the thing. I always say that I believe that your purpose is connected to people and a profit. Now, you may say, I mean, there's plenty of people who I think are inauthentic and they're living out their purpose. They may be making a profit, but are they truly impacting people? Now, think about it like this, right? I say that your purpose is connected to people, profit, and your gifts, right? You need your gifts in order to live out your potential. Every single person has gifts, right? Now, if I have the ability to execute my gifts really well, there's this this world in the structures and systems are set up for me to be able to do this really well, right? School, YouTube, certifications, getting experience, internships, all those different things, working on the job. That allows me to get better at my craft but that doesn't allow me to get better at being me. 
So that's why it's important for us to recognize that those, those are two different things. There's my gifts and what I execute well, and then there's me. I am not my gifts. My gifts are a part of me. And that's what we're talking about, right? So somebody can, they can be super dope at whatever their giftings are, but it doesn't mean that they're truly fulfilling their purpose, which allows them to impact people. And the reason why I think that the people hit is missed is because we connect more to realness. We connect more. We have more empathy and compassion and relatability when somebody is real. A lot of times that's steeped in pain, that's steeped in transparency, vulnerability, all of those things. Why? Because those are things that connect us as humans. And so if somebody is being inauthentic, they may seem sometimes perfect and they may seem as if they're unrelatable, untouchable, right? In a way that's like, man, I can't really, I can't really relate to that because they may be being inauthentic, but that, so in that their giftings are cut short, but just who they are may be preventing us from feeling like I can't relate to them because they're not even being really them. So remember this, it's impossible for you to truly live out your purpose if you're trying to be somebody else, if you're trying to be other than yourself, right? You might make the profit, but you'll miss out on the people. And we don't want to make the profit and miss out on the people, especially if we're one of those people who are being impacted by our lack of authenticity, right? So here's what's cool. I believe that you are uniquely and wonderfully made. Like you are literally one of one. And what's cool about that is there is over 8.1 billion people in this world to date. As of recording this, there's over 8.1 billion people in the world. And knowing that you're uniquely one of them, that's kind of fire. Like the thought of knowing out of 8.1 billion people, there's only one you. Now, I talked about this a couple episodes ago where like you may have similar gifts because there's 8.1 billion people. Like I'm not the only person I know. I have other friends who do similar things to me that speak, that coach and do workshops, all that stuff. And while I'm out here doing this, they're over there doing the similar thing because there's 8.1 billion people. I can't service 8.1 billion people. I'm not designed to service 8.1 billion people and neither are they. And so just because you have similar giftings as other people doesn't make you less than, doesn't make you and your giftings less than. And this is why it's important to be authentic because when you're authentic to you, your community will find you you're going to attract the energy that needs to be connected to you and your story. And this is why I think that, that that's so important because like, if I'm not being me, I might attract the wrong energy I, in a couple different ways. One, the wrong energy and the wrong people in general, and then the wrong, and not necessarily wrong as if they're the wrong people, but just like, I'll, 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 I'll share a story. I was listening to, um, this chick on, on YouTube and she's talking about creating your brand in your YouTube videos and not trying to niche down and different things like that. And, and why you shouldn't niche, niche down. And she was talking about how like you may start in one lane creating content. And when you create content in this one lane, then you're going to have certain people who like you for that thing. Then if you try to branch out to something different, the people who originally followed you for that one thing might see the other thing and say, well, this isn't why I followed you. Why are you kind of, why are you doing this? And I think this is the same thing here is like, not that those people were wrong. They just were expecting a certain brand, a certain thing, a certain output, a certain content from you as individual. And so when you take this back off of the YouTube and content creation and you do this as you, if you show up in the world as something specific, you're going to attract specific type of folks. And then if these folks aren't pro your growth, your development, your evolvement, your when I move, you move. If they don't support that, this is going to be a problem. Um, I saw another a video the other day um, in this pa pastor. He was just talking about how like if you are in a circle of friends and when you move, if your circle of friends don't move with you, then you're in a cage and not a community. Same exact concept here. If when you move and you evolve and you grow and your friendship and the people in the community that you're with, if they don't expand and grow with you and support that, then they're forcing you to stay in a specific box. Now you're preventing yourself from being authentically you because you're stuck being this person. And what's so dope about 
authenticity, involvement, growing, and all those things in life is like, you're going to be somebody else before you become the next you. Like my son and I, we've been talking about, <laughs> he just turned seven a couple weeks ago and he's been, we've been talking about how like, you know, next year, next week, next month, like you're not going to be the same you. And so now he has this concept in his mind, like I'm not going to be the same, but next year when I turn eight, I'm not going to be the same me. And so he already is hearing, you are going to grow. You are going to evolve. You're going to be somebody different. And not only are you going to be, we welcome it. We welcome the change. But as long as you stay true to you in the process, that's the most important part. And so for a lot of folks, being authentic hasn't been safe. Being authentic hasn't been welcoming at school, at home, in your community. And, and I'm not even, I can go as broad as talking about numerous reasons that I, I've experienced as far as sexuality, racially, you know, all those different things. And then in other people. And I think that the reason why this is so important is because if, if, it, if it hasn't been safe enough for me to be me, then I've chosen the option that is safest. And sometimes when you choose the option that's safest, doesn't mean that it's the realest. It doesn't mean that it's the one that is truly you. It was just the option that kept you safe. So my hope now is that people have the confidence to be able to be them. And then obviously the older you get, the more autonomy and freedom hopefully you have to choose to be you because in high school I mean if you if you're living in a space you don't make no money you ain't got no license you ain't got a path you don't have the the you don't have the tools to be as free to be you where it's not going to hinder you sometimes that's tough if you're in high school and, and other people are being mean again it might not be safe so when I talk about safe I mean psychologically safe I mean physically safe I mean emotionally safe like it's not, it hasn't always been safe enough for people to be them. And this is why I'm so passionate about you-ish, but also about authenticity being at the root of it because you deserve to be you. So that was, that was a lot of information and I hope that it's landing and making sense on why I believe authenticity is, is the, one of the most important things in order for you to live out your purpose, because if you're inauthentic if you don't believe in you you don't pursue authenticity in a way um with it with the hunger and the thirst right like if you are not ferociously attacking your calling your desire your need your like to be you i believe it's going to impact your dreams your vision your mission your get all of the above um so I'm going to take a step back real quick and I want to go, I want to go backwards to a little bit and share a little bit about my story, right? Of authenticity. I'm not going to go super deep, but just a little bit. So the reason why authenticity is really important to me is because like I have this picture that I'm going to show and obviously you'll only be able to see it if you're looking and you're watching the video on YouTube. Um, and I posted it on my IG, um, at, by the time this comes out about a, about a couple weeks ago. But if you look closely, it's a picture of me and there's a picture of me on Christmas and I'm holding a doll and there's another doll on the ground. And if you look closely, I'm holding and choosing the white doll while the black Barbie is on the ground. And the reason why this picture is so, it breaks my heart and it's so important and pivotal to authenticity, to my journey is because, I mean, it says it all. Think about that. Um, there's a, a research study that went out about how like with little kids and they chose the pretty doll. They chose the doll that they thought and it was always the white doll and not the black doll. Like <laughs> this is this is real life. This was my story. And I struggled, struggled uh, for 20 plus some years of my life being confident in being me, being black, being a woman, being a lesbian, like those three aspects I struggled with deeply and I'm not going to make this podcast about those specifically, but that was at the root of like, how do I get to being here where I can confidently say, confidently and proudly say I'm a black woman, lesbian believer, right? Like how do I allow those intersections to make up who I am? And it took 
25, 6, 7, 8, 28 some years to truly be here. And I know if I'm struggling and I struggled to be my most authentic self, I know there's other people out there. And this is what I'm talking about. There's a difference between you being able to act out your gifts and make a profit and perform than just being able to be you and truly impacting people. I believe now I positively probably impact more people in being my true self and being inspiration than I ever did historically. Now, even while being as inauthentic as I was, I wasn't a bad person. I wasn't mean. I wasn't not nice. I wasn't not caring. I still performed on the court in the classroom and professionally and as an academic, I still was able to do all these different things, right? Like skill wise, get degrees, play professional basketball, start coaching. All of my giftings were still in acting, but so was I. Did you catch it? I didn't even mean to say it like that, but I hope you caught it. Like all my gifts were still doing their thing and all I was performing. But then the thing about this is I then took my identity and attached it to my performance. That's the problem. That's the problem. When we aren't confident in being our truest selves and we're not authentically and intentionally pursuing to be who we are, but we're resting our lows on our gifts, on our talents, on our performance, you're then going to attach your identity to those things. And that's what I did. And so over this last five, six, seven years, I've been working really hard to figure out how do I be the Arisa that I was created to be? How do I just love me? How do I show up as myself and accept me and then look around and see who else accepts me? And that's who I'm rocking with. Who do I not have to switch up for? Who do I not have to be a uh, uh, camouflage or a reptile or like, um, I, I was real quick, I was talking to a student and she talked about how like, uh, in a group in our, in our, you are the bad club. And she was saying like, you know, I feel like sometimes I have to be, um, camouflage. I have to be like a, a rept reptile in order for me. What's the reptile's name? I'm, I'm spacing on the name of the, the animal. I get one of the reptiles that like is able to change. And she was saying like, she felt like that in certain spaces because she didn't get to just be her. She had to always shift and change who she was to be around certain people and she never felt like she could truly be herself. I was like, oh, I feel you. I've been there. I feel that. And again, this is why I love having these conversations so early, especially with youth and young adults. So that way they can gather these tools in order to figure out and know one, it's okay to be you. It's okay that historically you struggle with being you, but now from here on out, we need to intentionally figure out how do I do this? And so in that for me, um, I had to figure out how do I just love Arisa? Who is Arisa? What feels most comfortable to me? What makes my heart, my heart jump and sing? What gives me organic energy? How do I show up in the world? What, what am I naturally drawn to? Which is where the self-awareness piece comes up. So I'm not going to uh, jump ahead too forward in that, but um, it just, it breaks my heart when I see this picture of myself. It breaks my heart when I um, know that I didn't think that I, who I was, how I was created was good enough. So I pursued authenticity, not pursued authenticity. I pursued my life in a way that was inauthentic to me being me, which caused me, myself and others, a lot of harm and pain in the, in the path. And I think that's a, again, goes back to, you may be performing your gifts, but you're missing out on people or you're missing different hits when it comes to people. So here's the next piece, right? Think about how many people say, man, I just lost myself. They get in a relationship, they lose themselves. They become parents, they lose themselves. They get a new job and they lose themselves. They get caught up in something, they lose themselves. Like people are always talking about how often and how much they lose themselves. I don't think that that's a coincidence, right? Like we get into something new and then we lose ourselves. And for me, again, this is the root, a lot of you wish is how do I anchor and have this space and time in this thought process and mindset that allows me to be me and show up for me regardless of the situation? Because a lot of people lose themselves, but then it makes me think, how many of them ever knew themselves to begin with? 
So a lot of folks lose themselves, but how many of those folks ever knew themselves to begin with? Because I think when you truly know you, now you know what boundaries it is that you need. Now you know how you can show up authentically to prevent you from losing yourself in a situation. I don't know. That's that's a thought that I have um, in something I think that is really important, especially like if you're single and you but you want to be married, you better know yourself. Right. Or you want to be in a relationship. If you're in a relationship and then you want to bring in kids and bring on that like parental thought process, you really better know yourself because there goes your time. There goes that much more selflessness that you have to have. If you want to be a part of a team, you want to add new things to your life and your journey. Like you really need to know you and who you are before you add any extra things into your life and your spirit, because the other identities will start to shape you organically. And if you don't have a hold on to you, you will lose you just in the life cycle of how things happen. So let's break down these four aspects really quick, um, because like I said, the next four episodes after this are going to hone in on every single one of these um, uh, aspects of the equation. Okay, so the four aspects. Number one is humility. Humility for me is everything. And humility for me is everything because I, I, I lack it. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of times in life that I just didn't have it at all in general. Um, and and there are, there's so much more humility, ways that I can grow in humility. And I love that because that is a forever journey. Growing in your humility is similar to being authentic. It's a forever journey. And when I think of humility, and I've talked about this before and I'll say it again, Humility to me is not a beginning, it's not an end, it's not a socioeconomic status, it's not a location, it's not the ghetto, it's not poverty, like it's not a, 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 it's a mindset and it's a heart posture. Humility is a mindset and a heart posture. And so when you have the ability to anchor your heart and your mind in knowing I have an authentic view of self, humility is having an authentic view of myself. So if my heart and my mind is anchored in knowing that I have an authentic view of myself, that means everything. Not some things, not only the good things, but the good, the bad, the ugly, the sexy, the strengths, the weaknesses, the power, the all of it. Humility is seeing the entire picture of who I am and saying, <laughs> whoa, because the 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 there's an amazement which you should be amazed like we talked about when it comes to your giftings you should be awestruck you should be um so uh, um in in all of the things that you can do and of your purpose you should be captivated by your gifts you be catch like all that should captivate you you should look at your past and your history and be like man look at all the things i've gone through but you should also be like yo i messed up here i have this flaw i'm not very well here I need help here. I need one in being vulnerable with this. I need these people like humility is seeing the entire thing in it in it and it may or may not balance itself out. Some days it might feel and that it's just saying I have an authentic view, a holistic view of who I am and I still love me. I have a holistic view of who I am. I know that I'm great here, but I also need assistance here. I know that these are my skills, so I'm going to find somebody else with these skills that I don't have. These skills are these things that I, this knowledge I don't have. Humility is a hard posture that says, I may, I may know a lot, but I don't know it all. I don't want to be a know it all. I can be a forever learner, but that doesn't stop me from going out and seeking other mentorship and growth. I'm a leader, but that doesn't mean I don't, I don't need to be led. You know what I'm saying? Like humility is a heart posture that sits in a place of, of forever pursuance of, of more and give. I'm going to get more and I'm going to give more. And it's it's just it's so much different from the way that society has made us think of it. Humility is is OK. Let me let me not because I want to go in and I got to save all that for the actual humility episode. Um, but humility is so necessary to be authentic, because if you're not willing to pursue humility, you won't be authentic. and You won't live out your purpose, period. I don't care what nobody says. You can't convince me otherwise. Without humility, you cannot be authentic and you will not live out your purpose. You will make a profit. You will 
utilize your gifts because I'm, if you pursue those two things, cool, you can do it, but you're not going to feel good about you and who you are. You're not going to feel good about the impact you have on other people. You're not going to feel good with just being the, just being you. And this man, we see this every single day in life, folks that lack humility. You're not going to feel good about your circle. You're going to feel alone. So many different things. So humility is the first aspect of the authenticity equation that we have to be able to pursue and fall in love with and have a healthy relationship with or else it's going to be a wrap. Okay. Number two, um, self-awareness. Now, self-awareness is connected to humility. And the reason why self-awareness is connected to humility is because if I don't know me, (laughs) if I don't know me, I can't do me. If I don't know me, I can't be me. If I don't know how I need to be shown up for, I can't show up for me and I can't tell anybody else how to show up for me. And humility is the difference between cockiness and confidence. And self-awareness gives you the ability to know when am I toting that line? They're like, like humility is the difference between cockiness and confidence and self-awareness gives me the knowledge, the know, the understanding, the alert that I might be told in the line and when I cross the line. Now, as a, as, as a confidence coach, as a confident human being, there are times where I'm like, ooh, that was kind of cocky. There was times where I'm like, that lacked humility. There was times where I'm like, ooh, that was kind of distasteful. And that's just, that's just a part of the journey. But it, without self-awareness and knowing I may have crossed that line, without embracing humility, then it's just soaring down the line. I don't care. And that's where humility or confidence becomes cockiness and ignorance and distasteful. And it's like, oh, that's not it. That's not being purposeful. That's not being um, uh, righteous in a way that we, we are supposed to be when we're on this journey. But without humility and self-awareness, you don't have that gauge. You know what I'm saying? So self-awareness requires vulnerability. It requires transparency and it requires patience. You have to be so patient with you to get to know you. You have to be so patient because you're you. And there's going to be times you're not going to want to be you. There's going to be times you're not going to want to show up for you. There's going to be times you're not going to want to speak to you. There's not going to, there's going to be times you don't want to hear what you got to say. But you got to be patient enough to just sit and listen. There's going to be times you're going to be in the active act of whatever and you still have to be able to hear what is it that I'm saying how am I showing up am I being true to me and and our active journey of of self-awareness allows us to feel it you can feel it in your cells you can feel it in your mind you can feel it in your brain you can feel it in your body your gut will tell you am I being authentic to myself but if you don't spend time by yourself to catch these feelings on a natural it's going to impact how they show up when you're in public spaces, you know what I'm saying? Um, self-awareness is also like the knowledge or perception of something. So again, we have to have time for ourselves in isolation so we can gain some more knowledge about us. We have to be able to get to the root so we can gain some more knowledge of what's going on. So we can see, well, how do I perceive these things in the way that I do? How do I, why do I perceive me in the way that I do? Why do I perceive others in the way that I do? So if you're not inquisitive, if you're not curious, It's going to impact your self-awareness, which is going to impact your humility, which is going to impact how authentic you show up in all spaces. Okay. Number three, audacity. Audacity is, (laughs) I remember being younger and like, you know, middle school, maybe elementary and somebody's like, man, they had the audacity to woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and it's so funny. Cause like back in the day, it was like audacity was like, it was a big old word, like audacity. Ooh. And that's exactly what it is. It's like, I think it was one of my homegirls too. She used to be like, man, they had the audacity, you know what I'm saying? Had her neck moving. And it's funny because it's always like how you, what? Like you had the audacity to do and fill in the blank. And a lot of times Somebody having the audacity is connected to something negative, right? They have the audacity to do this. For me and for us, when it comes to authenticity, you got the audacity to be you? Come on. 
Like that's the thought process that I want you to have is like, it takes audacity for you to show up as yourself because there's going to be, and we say this all the time, there's always opposition. So when that opposition arises, somebody's going to be like, we got the audacity to be themselves. Absolutely. I do. I a hundred percent have the audacity to be me. And so do you. And so this is where self-awareness comes into play. And then our next one, I'm going to say it in a second, but you have to have the audacity in the power, in the, the, the conviction that I get to be me. Like that's what confidence is. That's what, that's what humility is. That's what self-awareness is. That's what authenticity is. Is like, I have the audacity to be me regardless of what anybody else has to say. Like, it's my choice to be me. I was born to be me. I wasn't born to be somebody else. I'm not going to have the audacity to be one of the other 8.1 billion people in the world. I'm going to have the audacity to be me. So audacity is like, it's feisty. It, but so is confidence. Audacity is like, ooh. And so is authenticity. But you will lose audacity when you lose humility. That's good. You will lose audacity when you lose humility. Because if your audacity isn't rooted in humility, it'll turn into something. It'll turn into toxicity. When your audacity isn't rooted by humility, it turns into toxicity. Now, again, that's a whole episode for itself, which which will come in a couple of weeks. But when you think about it, though, when somebody has the audacity to be him and they can proceed, proceed, almost think about audacity anchored in humility is graceful, not distasteful. <laughs> audacity anchored in humility is graceful, not distasteful. So when somebody has the audacity to be themselves, it's not like, ugh. Now it will be to the opposition folks, right? But to those who know your heart and they know that your heart is root- rooted in humility, They're going to see it as, wow, inspiring. And this is why when you're you, it's going to impact, positively impact other people, which is connected to your purpose. But when your audacity isn't rooted in humility, it then becomes distasteful, which is toxic, which is like, ooh, I don't want nothing to do with that. So the next piece is trust. You have to have the audacity to even trust that being who you are is who you were created to be. Without self-trust, what do we have? To the extent that I can trust me is my extent to be able to trust others. The measure that I judge myself is the measure that I'm going to judge other folks. Because if I'm judging me, I'm going to judge others that much more. And, And to be transparent, I had to pray this morning like, oh, God, I've been judging myself a whole lot lately. Can you help me not to do that? Because I've also noticed I've been judging others and I don't want to do that. Tap into my heart. And that's what this is about. That's the humility of like, I'm struggling in this area. I'm judging me over certain things, but I see that coming out here. Okay, help me get that joint right. That goes back to the humility. That goes back to the self-awareness of noticing. That goes back to the audacity of like, okay, I'm still going to show up as me. But like, can I not judge others for showing up as themselves? that's tough, but it's a part of the process. Right. And so the trust is even, even when I mess up, fail, I'm somebody else and, and toting the line and being inauthentic. Can I trust that I can get myself back? Can I trust that I, I can, I can be me. Can I trust that I can go to that old space where I used to be the old me and not show up as the old me, but show up as the new me? That's a big deal. Can I trust that I'm not going to put myself back in spaces that are not psychologically safe? Can I trust that I'm not going to put myself back in spaces that are not physically safe, emotionally safe? Can I trust me with me? And if I can't trust me with me, I'm going to have a hard time trusting me with you, which means we just got trust issues all the way around. So. Man, I'm excited. I I'm, I'm, I'm excited to record these next four episodes because they are, um, I think they're pivotal to this mission. They're pivotal to the journey. I believe that being able to have a firm grip and understanding of the importance of humility, of self-awareness, 
audacity and um, trust in their relation to authenticity and their relation to living out our purpose with confidence is, is every bit of everything. And so I thank you for going on this journey with me. I thank you for allowing me to just kind of sit with you and deliver this message in a different kind of energy because I believe it's that important. Like I believe that you are born to be you, that you are uniquely one and one of one out of the 8 billion people on this planet and only you can do you like you do you, boo. Can't nobody do you like you do you, boo. But if you aren't humble enough to get to know you and to have the audacity to be you and to trust that it's okay to be you, then it's not going to matter. Now you're just another number versus being uniquely you. So I don't care if somebody else has the same name as you, the same giftings as you, a similar purpose as you. Nobody else is you and you're valuable. And which is why we believe here that you are the bag and your bag is not like anybody else's bag. But I need you to say, okay, I'm going to anchor myself in humility because that's the first step. And I'm going to pursue this journey of being as authentic as I can, but in humility, which means it's not brash. It's not disrespectful. It's not distasteful. It's not toxic, toxic. It's, it's graceful. It's bold. It's powerful, but there's still grace in the midst of it. Right. And, and that right there is why it's a forever journey of having that self-awareness of knowing, Ooh, I, maybe, okay. And maybe you didn't, disrespect yourself in a certain way, but maybe you didn't give yourself enough credit. Maybe you lacked an audacity. Maybe you didn't speak up for you. Maybe you won't, weren't vulnerable or vocal enough about certain things. You have to be able to give yourself that forgiveness. Humility is about that forgiveness. Humility is about the, the awareness of knowing, mm, I probably could have showed up better for me then and giving yourself the grace and then pursuing. So all of this is taking a deeper look at what does it mean to be authentic? What does it mean to be me? What does it mean to move throughout this world in a way that I was created to be and giving myself permission to change without asking for permission from somebody else and, and giving myself the permission to get to know me on a deeper level so that way I can impact myself and others on a deeper level as well. So here are three things that I want you to think about. I want you to ask yourself. Um, number one, how comfortable am I being me? How comfortable am I being me? Ask yourself that question. How comfortable am I? Am I comfortable being me? Am I comfortable showing up as me? Or do I feel like I need to be somebody else in order to be more comfortable? The second question is when did I first develop a hunger to be myself? Like I remember when I developed, I was like, I was, it was almost sickening. I just could not not be me the whole me anymore. Excuse me. I, ooh, my bad. I couldn't do it. I couldn't not be me anymore. So is there a point? Is there some people like, man, I just be mixed. Shout out to you for being you from day one. Um, but that wasn't the case for me. So when did you first develop a hunger to be yourself? Third thing I want you to think about is out of the four aspects, which one do you struggle with the most? Is it humility? Is it self-awareness? Is it audacity or is it trust? Do you struggle with any of these four, one more than the other? Or um, are you like, nah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm just, I'm, I'm selling and it feels good. Are you like, man, I really struggle with the trust piece. I really struggle with humility. I really struggle, like, which one is it? And I'm here for the struggles because there are days where I struggle with all four <laughs> at the same time. And there's days that I struggle with some more than other. And there's days that I'm like, I feel good in all of them. But that's a part of the journey. So that's what I want you to remember is trusting the process is life, is the journey. Life is the process. Life is the journey. And it's so much better and so much more fruitful when you just get to be you along it. So I hope that this message inspired you in some way to continue to be you. Um, I hope that you're eager and excited to listen to the next four, well, all the episodes, but especially the next four as we dive deeper to this authenticity equation um, and to, so you can really figure out the formula of putting these together. Um, I hope that you like, share, subscribe, all those amazing things. Um, so that way we can get this message out there to as many people that need to hear it. Um, if you're somebody that's like, yo, I need you to come do this workshop at my space. I need you to come speak and tell us, hit me up. We're here. We do this. So let's connect. But in the meantime, I need you to do a couple things. I need you to, number one, remember that you are the bag. And number two, continue with confidence. 
Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. Reese. Peace.